For January, we're on this series, Order My Steps, Lord. Order my steps. As we enter this new year, asking the Lord to order, to have some discernment about the decisions and the ways we go. Asking God to speak to us. Today, the first part of this series is called Christmas to be Continued. Christmas to be Continued. I'm a law and order kind of person. Somewhere along the way, consistency fell off, but every now and then, what I love about law and order is you can miss a whole year, you can miss several episodes, and whenever you want to turn on law and order, you can turn it on and you can instantly know what is going on. There's no real deep commitment. It's not a complex kind of storyline to follow. And in 50 minutes, you can have a problem, a complication, and sometimes resolution given to you. I admit sometimes the problem is more disturbing, and some episodes have been really, really sick. And sometimes the problem is so complex, you cannot just do one show, but at the very end, you will see come up to be continued. In fact, this suggests that this episode is not over yet. There's more to come. There's more coming. And so next week, you should watch it. We need more time to get to a resolution. There are some disturbing actors sometimes that reappear. But every now and then, there's that really, really powerful episode. And at the end, they say, to be continued. Isn't that what keeps us coming back to our shows? Maybe yours is not law and order. Think about it for a minute, but you probably have one. We watch an episode, and when it ends, we know that we want more. And so we come back again and again, week after week, and God forbid it's on Netflix. We can just binge watch and go straight. We are hooked season after season. We like the flow. We like a good plot. We like the characters. We like the content. Or maybe it's just entertaining after a hard day of work. We want to know what will happen next and week after week after week. And so we make sure to catch the next show. Even before COVID, when people were out and busy, I would hear people saying, I got to put my recorder on because I'm going to be away and I don't want to miss this episode. The next and the to be continued keeps us coming back and returning for more. While Christmas was different for many this year with Omicron hanging around, some of us still managed to find the special in Christmas. Or maybe we didn't find it this year, but we could look back on a previous year and glean a Christmas that meant a lot. The mood of Christmas is often one of sharing and giving and being a part of festivities. There is a spirit of kindness that radiates in the air. Suddenly, we want Santa Claus to visit every home. We don't care if people were nice or naughty. We want the mystery of a baby Jesus to fill our hearts with peace and joy and love. And don't forget hope. There is plenty of that at Christmas time. Even this week, I got a message from a not-for-profit that said, we got more turkeys to give away. It is the time when we really try to care for others. That's what Christmas has often looked like. Music playing, eggnog, trees with gifts underneath. This reminder that if we can hold on and hold out, hope is coming for us in the form of Jesus Christ. In the biblical text today are the Israelites looking for Christmas to be continued. They have experienced a crushing defeat. Their land, their resources, and community were overtaken by a powerful enemy without compassion. Their way of life was destroyed and their nation decimated. No one has to ask them, how low can you go? They were already low, low, low to the ground. Their hope was gone. Sometimes desolation can be a space we occupy for a day, but sometimes desolation can be a space we operate for a season and for some even years. 
Sometimes we get stuck. We get stuck in those spaces and we can't seem to get ourselves unstuck when it seems like the Israelites are beyond hope and can take no more. A word of hope comes from God. In Jeremiah, the chapters are divided into three sections. Where the text is we're reading today is within the section called the Book of Consolation. Consolation, comfort. This section is all about words of comfort, words of promise for a people that are living in captivity. This is what God's going to do for you. He who scattered Israel will gather him. We heard that today. And will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. I will turn their mourning into what? Joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. We heard that read in the text today. As humans, we can only take so much. We're actually quite fragile before we start breaking. And Jeremiah is the reminder of God's unfailing faithfulness to us, even when we don't always Feel it for those who are going through, those who worry about our, our current political climate, those who are worried about how we are doing as a nation, for those who are tackling COVID, those who are worried about the rip between the left and the right. The days and times look bleak. We are in winter. The trees are barren. We are needing some words of consolation. We need, in this moment of time, a to-be-continued. Lord, to-be-continued. Lord, to-be-continued. You ever needed a to-be-continued in your life? You ever needed to know this is not the end? You ever needed to know that my life matters? You ever needed to know God has placed a common where humans often put a period? Ever needed to know God still knows my name and God wants to order my steps? Ever needed to know the race is not given to those who wear Nike, but those who endure? Nothing against Nike, but to those who endure. Ever needed to know God is not done with us yet? ever needed to know the chapter may have been ended, but the book called Our Life is still being written to be continued. It remains to be seen what is God is going to do, not only for us, but for this community of faith. God is faithful, faithful, faithful to us. You know, sometimes when you're in a funky space, it's hard to hear consoling words. It's not only hard to hear, but it's hard to believe. When you are in the fire, it's hard to hear words of comfort, even harder to believe. Came off vacation only to discover someone I love in my intimate circle has COVID. Well, I heard a lot of people have COVID, but one who was intimate that actually got admitted to the hospital two days ago, that is actually on an air machine. Someone with a compromised immune system it's hard to hear everything's going to be okay. It's hard not to worry or be concerned. It's hard to hear God's got the whole world in God's hand. It's hard to hear that God cares about our situation. Hard sometimes to see that anything good is happening in our future. And this ain't nothing compared to what the Israelites went through. Sometimes it's hard to hear the prophecy of consolation, harder to believe because of all the stuff happening in our own lives, of all the stuff we see happening in the world. <laughs> Every time we cut on CNN or MSNBC or God forbid Fox, hard to hear, harder to believe. We have to honor where people are. We need badly for Christmas, Christmas to be continued. It was lunchtime and George hadn't eaten in two days. He felt weak and he felt faint. Everywhere that George went, he got chased away. At one place, the owner threatens to call the police. And George thinks to himself, who will the police believe, me or the owner? But his hunger won't leave him alone because George has had nothing to cross his mouth in two days. He feels weak. 
He passes a McDonald. He likes McDonald's. And there inside, he spots a table, a table with a cheeseburger and french fries sitting on it. No one is at the table. There sits the food all by itself. He was only hoping to check out the trash cans to see what people had put in them. But he creeps closer, tempted. He eyes the path from the booth to the door. The thought crosses his mind to grab both and to sprint out of the restaurant. He reaches the edge of the table, now his mouth developing saliva, and the owner of the meal appears. But it's Christmas time, and everyone is nicer. Instead of getting chased away, something different happens at Christmas time. Folks are a little bit kinder to one another. So why is Christmas just one day or one season? Why can't we continue Christmas? Why can't we carry all the sentiments and the spirit of Christmas right into the new year? Sustain generosity and good vibes and festivities to our neighbors and strangers. I'm not ready for Christmas to be over. One of our new ancestors, Desmond Tutu, says, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. We can continue the spirit of Christmas, console folks right where they are. I discovered that Home Alone is our Christmas movie, my family's Christmas movie. The big family leaves behind, and every time, who do they leave behind? Eight-year-old Kevin McAllister somehow gets left to buy. And he ends up running into those two bad guys who need to be stopped. In Home Alone 1, they want to burglarize his home. And in Home 2, they want to steal from a toy store that donates all its proceeds from Christmas Eve sales to a children's hospital. And so this little guy, Kevin McAllister, must take on the world. But in our faith tradition, we as God's people do take on the world, but we take it on together. It's not just one person by themselves, but it's all of us united. United Church of High Park, united. Sisters and brothers of faith elsewhere that maybe even speak a different language. Other world religions, because they all impart similar values. We take on the world to shine our light in these times, beyond holidays and Christmas and capitalism to shine our light. Matthew 5, 14 says of us, we are the light of the world, a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. So let us in this new year resolve to continue Christmas. Let us resolve in this new year to continue to be radiant in the light of Christ, to cast God's vision of life abundant and fullness before others. Let us in this year be radiant with the newness and fullness of life. Let us in this year continue Christmas and commit to a better world, even if, even if that only means a better you in this current world. Let us be radiant and believe that our mourning can be turned into joy. Our emptiness can be filled, our brokenness can be made whole, and our disease can be healed. Believe in it, commit it, envision it, become it. Continue to let the light of Christ shine in us. We need a little Christmas now. We need Christmas to be continued. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Christmas, Christmas to be continued. Amen.